aloha. Good morning. Uh, good day. Good wherever you are out in the world. Um, oh man, my mustache. Yeah, welcome, uh, global KNF worldwide. Uh, February fifth, twenty twenty three, and welcome to Korean Natural Farming Office Hours. Um, so give me a sec here, and I'm gonna pull things up. Sorry, it's a little bit late here today, but um, let's see here. So let's start off today with a little bit of higher wisdom here. And so today is the well. Um, return to the well of goodness. No community can survive without a dependable source of pure water. In a similar way, human beings cannot survive without a reliable source of spiritual nourishment. In fact, we need two wells. An external source of guidance, such as the I Ching, and an internal source of guidance, which must be our own good character. This hexagram comes to encourage you to concentrate on developing and purifying and utilizing your two wells. Notice the name of the hexagram, Ching, the well. The I Ching has survived in countless civilizations for thousands of years for a simple reason. It is an inexhaustible source of spiritual nourishment. It provides us with the fundamental building blocks of a successful life. If you approach it sincerely, without mistrust or frivolity, it will guide you through every difficult hour with unimpeachable wisdom. If you muddy the well, however, by doubting the I Ching or by placing your ego desires above the counsel it gives you, you will impede your own progress. The purest of external wells, the I Ching, is also an invaluable aid in developing and cleansing our internal well of your own good character. It will, if you are sincere, reveal to you the fundamental issues of your life and it will instill the values necessary to successfully negotiate those issues. The hexagram Ching comes to encourage you not to muddy the well of your own good character in any way now. In relating to others, look beyond any f external faults of muddiness and acknowledge that a clear well exists inside them somewhere. No person is without this. And by speaking to it, you strengthen it. And if you will follow these counsels, you will meet with true and lasting success in life. So, awesome. Hang on, I'm going to open this curtain. A little less dark on me, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good to see you guys coming in from all over Long Island, New York. Um, three degrees now, it's 49, halfway through winter and dreaming of spring. Yeah, it's spring here, man. <laughs> um, Stone Mason, how's it? Cecily, what's up in Western Australia? Um, oh man, negative 19 degrees. Man, it's nice here, man. It's like 85, something like that. And um, Germany's in the house, and uh, George is here. And, and George, um, just I just got your email here, and because I was late over here to not get things set up, um, I might be able to get into um, some sort of um, some sort of thing here. But I because I can't get into it right now. Um, it's a little bit challenging. Uh, I can't, I can't like live bring this up. So anyway, um, and, uh, hello from Florida, Horace. Hey man, you should check out eyewitness. He's down there somewhere. And, um, <laughs> oh man, your pipes froze solid. Oh yeah. And the beard is looking pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. It's, it's just doing its thing naturally. Haven't done anything for it for years. Um, and, um, Good question coming from Stonemason. How's my new milk cow? 
Um, she's pretty sweet. We, we've been dealing with a, um, a mastitis issue. Um, so we've been fermenting her feed, also giving her, um, like garlic, ginger, sort of like OHN, um, type of mix, uh, as well as honey into her feed and dealing with that. Um, and then also it's like, it's gnarly to have the, um, the, um, yeah, we're, we're milking her by hand right now. So I'm trying to, I'm ordered a milk machine and it's on its way. Um, and <laughs> Daniel's here tuning in while he pours off some fermented plant juice. I think he's maybe over at my mom's house doing that. Um, and yeah, so anyway, I ended up, um, building, building this stanchion for my cow. You can see my cow in the back and I built that little stanchion there. So it's just a little bit easier to, um, to get her in there and to, to milk her. Um, she's really nice and tame though. She's been milked before, so it's not that hard. And then other, um, other kind of funny thing is that, um, here at the farm, we have a bunch of really nice yards. My dad, my dad likes to mow and keeps, keeps a really nice yard going. Um, but he's out skiing, uh, in, in Utah, I think. And so I've just taken the cows, my other two, these are my, um, Wagyu beef cows and I'm letting them go out and eat the, um, the yard grass. And so, because I, I now have five cows, which is more, um, pasture than I can do, um, I'm, I'm grazing these cows just straight up on the yard and they're eating the short mowed grass and they, they really like it. They've, they've been just hammering through it and they do a really good job, almost better than a mower, uh, except for they kind of dent the lawn and then they leave poop everywhere. But the poop is then easily, um, able to be cleaned up, uh, and then put into garden beds, turned into IMO5 and, um, put into all those, um, kind of things for natural farming. So it's kind of nice to have them actually around the house here. And then let's see here. Other good news that happened this past week. Um, Ben, who was here for the training in January, um, just sent me this photo and he's back in Arizona and check out that IMO collection. So, you know, for all the people that are out in the desert and having trouble getting IMOs and in arid climates, um, this just shows that, you know, Ben took the time, came out here, learned with me directly, and look at his success. I mean, not only did he get a round basket that he found someplace, you know, to get out there and to do that, but he also was able to collect just like beautiful IMO in the desert. Um, and then he put it, and this was right in his backyard. So, you know, when you think, oh, you got to go someplace really nice and find it, he was able to, let me see if it focus right on that. Will it? Yes, no. But it just says backyard IMO on his collection jars there. Um, so, so he was able to to do that and um get those right right in his yard i don't know does it show his yard yeah he has he has a few nice um trees and things in his yard and um so just just goes to show you know um if you have <clears throat> good training you good know-how good confidence then you can collect imos in the desert and phoenix and no problem um, would be nice to kind of talk to him to see, you know, which part of the, um, methodologies he, he used to do this. Um, but it just shows that, you know, success is right there. Um, and I don't know if there were any colors inside. He didn't send me an inside photo, but just from looking at the outside, it just looks like beautiful mycelia. And I would imagine, uh, in the desert, it's, it's, a little bit easier to not get as much, um, you know, other colors and things because you're 
so dry and right there and just, you know, you get the microbes and they go right into your rice and you have this amazing, um, thing happen. So, um, it's suggesting to me. Okay. So, um, oh man, I wish I could fire that up. In fact, um, and then there was one other thing I wanted to share with you, but I didn't, like I said, I just got here a little, a little late today. I've been, I was kind of sick the other day. I'm not sure exactly what happened to me. It wasn't like a regular sickness. It was more like fatigue, exhaustion type of thing that happened. And, uh, let me see here if this, I can swap this SD card in. I did want to show you a little bit of the drone shots. Um, that I've been doing here as I've been getting my pastures better. And my camera doesn't like that, but that's okay. Um, so let me see here. I'll fire this up and then if I can find here, um, little last couple drone shots here. And I'll fire these up on the other screen. Let's see here. Um, move this over here. And then go share the screen. Um, so, so this is the farm drone going here. Let's see. I'm going to put the playback speed to fast. So it's going to go a little faster than I recorded it, just so you can see. Um, but here, you know, my farm, the bananas, this is my house here. Getting more sugar cane in, put a new garage. Got my cows grazing the lawn there. Um, all the bananas, the IMOs growing on the roof. Um, in the pasture over here, been grazing this. Uh, I got my new, I think, right, is that? That might be my cow right there, um, Daryl, and then her her new son Eo, out there. But they've been they've been hammering this pasture, so I need to go out here and start treating this pasture here, because I basically just let them tear it down. And then this pasture here, I did do a whole bunch of treatment on. So I just want to pause it right here and see if you can see the difference between my pasture here, where I've been resting it, and I, and my cows did. Um, escaped the other day out of the electric fence over on this the, the left side of the screen um and they walk through here so you can see their trails a little bit but if you look and you see my neighbors up here where he is not keeping the pigs out and then he's also over grazing it and do you see all the mud starting to develop in his um land there's just the dirt and mud um and then right down here the orchard i, I just i just ran the cows in there um, so that was just, that's just kind of a drone little picture from kind of the back, my backyard there. Um, and then let's see here, uh, if I go up, oh, it's not gonna, hang on. Let me go up here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hang on. Oh, that's why. Okay. I'm gonna stop that one. And then I'm gonna put this one over here. Um, and this is, um, the banana plantings and all this up at my up at my barn. So I'll play this one here. Um, so this is cruising around, and again, just if you can see the pastures, like the difference. My neighbor's pasture. Um, when I um, this this neighbor, the, the neighbor that lives here now, moved in about two years ago or so. Or it was it was actually just be just after twenty twenty. In 2020, they moved in. So two, two, two years ago, essentially. Um, and my prior neighbor had been doing rotational grazing, had all this paddock off, and he had done an amazing work to bring this whole patch pasture back to life. And my pasture, I would just let my cows, two cows, just kind of graze wherever they wanted. And they had kind of overgrazed and um, brought in a bunch of this broom grass just as they had overgrazed the grass. Um, but to see the difference in the flip-flop where my pasture got richer and his got poorer because of 
poor practices and then also not fencing the pigs out and look at just the amount of dirt and, and mud and everything up there it's just it's kind of incredible for me to see and then down here where i've completely rested like this area here um this is where i need to get the cows into there to graze a little bit um and um you know knock knock that grass down a little little bit um but here's here i'll just let this thing play here's the barn um the bananas all doing pretty well um you know, um, the bananas in the back just kicking butt here. Um, you know, the fish, the IMOs, everything really helping, um, flying around here. And then just, you know, kind of the differences in these two pastures of like where I'm bringing mine back to life and all of these little, um, piles you see out here. I don't, I don't know if you can actually see them, but these are the, um, fish and microbe piles that we've been dropping out here. So uh, I'm just trying to revitalize the land um, by putting microbes and fish. But yeah, you just look at the difference between these two pastures of just, man, I can't, I can't believe the stark difference of, of what's happened, you know? And so just trying to document this. And then I just built this little um, stanchion here over the holidays, Christmas time, uh, built this new little shed to get water here so I can run this pasture rotational grazing with water access. And then here's my dad's um, taro and all his trees and everything flowering nice over here. And then all this pipe at the bottom is going to be my new electric system um, coming in. So I got a lot of work to do on that. Um, but just cruising over the farm, kind of looking at the two pastures, looking at the difference between these of just, you know, bringing them back to life, doing my best to to make it all happen. Um, let's see, let me see if it's going to go, I'm going to get a little faster, faster, um, just like all YouTube everything video faster consume consume oh and there's there's my two cows and then here's my neighbors uh planting planting these too and it's just like um you know if you don't if you're not it, uh, um educated in agriculture you just plant trees in a field and expect them to grow and i have no idea how people expect that to happen like why would your tree want to reach out into this dead grass um i don't know anyway but um just watching his trees kind of die um as he's planted these about a year ago and none of them have grown. They've all lost their leaves. They're dying. But my two cows there, brand new little um, bull. It's going to be a steer here pretty soon. And I just had to mow this field down. It was tall elephant grass like this. But as I mowed it down, uh, now it'll regrow and these cows can graze that area as the regrowth comes up. So if your grass is too tall like this, if you mow it down and then I put IMOs and sprayed IMOT out here, sprayed it all up um, that will help to um, get it nice but and then this is my other guy's pasture but see the difference like for some reason that looks better I don't know anyway but um kind of flying over the farm here a little bit seeing seeing what's uh what's going on but I think from my opinion and uh, <laughs> I think things are looking better you know microbes everything uh, doing doing its thing um, but really you know you can see the cows have brought them into this this is my orchard it was tall grass and in a few days they were able to just like mow this down and so i've been really getting into the uh, you know the animals and raising them uh you know the, the rotational grazing and getting that together uh put in a new garage right here which is good it's going to keep my uh my vehicle from rotting away and all my sugar cane field right here making sugar um and the river down there where i'm going to put the hydroelectricity um and just looking at the farm it's looking pretty nice nice waterfall down there if you ever come visit you can come down here swim it's real fun gotta watch out for the fire ants though um but just looking you know max altitude cruising over seeing seeing what's going on the farm and all the all this big lawn you know where my dad likes this lawn since, since he's gone a may graze in here too may get our milk cow grazing down in here 
um, you know, all this grass, you may as well go to good work, you know, if you're, if you're doing it, you may as well feed, feed everything nicely. Um, but yeah, so if, you know, I got to juxtapose this to, um, you know, started flying the drone in 2020, but, um, we'll juxtapose that so you can see kind of how things have improved and changed and, um, still a lot of broom grass in my pasture, but I think as the thing gets richer, it's going away. I can see, I don't know if you can see out here where the piles of fish were dropped. Um, but there's like little green spots where I dropped the fish. Oh, you can just see the mud here and the dirt and just everything and the grass just going to crap over here from this angle. <laughs> um, and I, I told him the other day, I was like, I think you're grass. I think, you, you know, but anyway, he's, he doesn't, I don't think he has time or energy to get out there to rotationally graze, which sometimes it's a little bit harder. Um, then coming down, looking at the sugar fields. Um, bananas and all that. I'll plant more sugar into here. And then right there at my shed, you know, the shed's in now and the shed has the sugar, sugar, um, cane press in it and everything. And, um, the ulu trees, oh, the longan tree got pruned. We pruned out the center of the tree. And then here, here's a little chicken wagon actually. So Sue's built this up the other day and now she has, uh, about eight chickens in a chicken wagon cruising around. Um, collect a lot of IMO under this bamboo here. It's a great tree. Let's see what else. Just blurry, blurry, blurry. Oh, all these barrels. That's where I get my fish. They get put in that, those barrels. Um, but yeah, things, things are doing okay. You know. Let's see. Oh, there's Kapila's wood chipper. He's over here. He was fixing it yesterday. Hopefully that thing starts up for him. And he's he's probably going to start a YouTube soon. So there's my little shed. Oh, it's looking nice. Cool. It's a little drone overflight. Um, I'm going to get the cows actually this next week. I'm going to electric fence across here. And then this, there is a... Um, a permanent fence over here. So I'm an electric fence across here, then electric fence down here and run the cows actually in this valley. And I've just been using these two cows because they eat so much grass so well. They were kind of starved as, as, um, little, little cows. So now they just, they just eat like crazy versus my other cows are more picky. Um, got some microbe tanks there. And, um, uh, yeah, the fruit tree's doing well. Look at you can see all the lemons there. You can see the limes. The tangelo's not doing as well, but hey, what can you do? Probably get out there and spray more, right? So I've been spraying for the past two weeks. I've been spraying every Wednesday. It's really been helpful. Um, but yeah, so so there you go. A little bit seeing my farm, um, what we're doing there. Um, you know, things been growing up. Um and so, yeah, so, oh, and so, so Ben is saying he collected in the corner of his backyard that gets no direct sunlight. The neighbors have a tree and bushes over, overgrowing the wall. As for the colors, I had quite a few different yellows, blues, and greens. So Ben's here to talk about his IMOs that he collected, and he did have a few colors under there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I plan to do that with goats too. Um, except for the only problem with goats is they will eat your trees. Um, so you have to fence your trees away. They'll eat the bark off your trees. And then, um, you know, you gotta watch out for that. Um, intense, yeah. Intensive rotational grazing, man. It's the key in, and again, Korean natural farming, the, um, you know, the whole point is to have integrated animal systems and we have those integrated animals. It really closes the loop. Like I was saying last week with the, um, with the dairy cow, now we have lactobacillus of cream, milk, butter, uh, pretty soon we'll probably have ghee, all those things, um, and doing it. So, um, 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe that was a Chinese spy balloon. Maybe it was me. I actually, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that was a psyop because I don't know how the balloon all of a sudden got over Montana without anyone seeing it coming. So I'm pretty sure it's not real, but you know, whatever. I just don't trust the news or anything they say anymore, especially after what happened in 2020, when it turns out that, um, that thing they gave everyone probably wasn't the best. Um, I will keep that in mind. I'm gonna wait till spring. Kept the IMOs and doors. Okay. Am I pressing my own cane juice and making crystallized sugar? Um, I'm pressing my own cane juice and I wanted to make my own sugar. I was looking at it yesterday. Um, a couple of YouTube videos on how to do it, but um, basically it's like you just heat it up, skim off the um, the foam that comes up, and then pour it and keep stirring it as it cools and it turns to crystallized sugar. So, um, so looking forward to doing that. Um, got a, got a walk, got a thing to do it. So, um, so wanted to do that. Um, man, I wish, I wish I could just bring folks in this way. In fact, engage with my audience, start a QA poll. No. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure what that does if I do that. There is some way to bring in other folks. I think I have to be on the mobile app for YouTube, though. Um, and I'll do a little bit on our on our cane press and, and maybe make a video. My whole idea is to have pure KNF sugar and then make the ferments with it and then have it all be like all KNF the whole way through. So I'm not using sugar that's had pesticides and those things put on it, you know, just keep it all legitimately um, pure KNF. That's the reason, you know, I chose the name pure KNF. I thought eventually I'll be producing sugar and then I'll be able to do that. So, um, and yeah, I have, I have purple and I prefer the yellow um, sugar cane. The yellow is a little bit softer, easier to go through, has a little bit more, um, sugar. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make sugar as well and see. Um, um, and George is asking, is there a way to tell a difference between cane sugars and other types of sugar in a home setting? I don't think so. Once sugar has been refined, um, I mean, maybe, maybe you could tell chemical, but, but it's like, at least if it's refined white sugar, it's just sucrose and there's no way to tell what source it came from. I don't think, um, besides like, you know, if you get into Rudolf Steiner and biodynamics, he'll talk about the energetics of, of beet sugar is not as good as cane sugar. Um, and I, I don't know how you would tell maybe, I mean, if you're, if you're going to believe that, then maybe you'd believe that a pendulum would tell you and maybe it would. I don't know. Um, it's up to, up to you, up to, you know, your intuition and what you want. But I know, um, you know, brown sugar from sugar cane, pretty easy to make. Um, and yeah, it doesn't, Demerara is probably sugar cane. Um, I think that just refers to the, that it wasn't refined of what it is. I'm not exactly sure. Um, so shoot, I wish I could bring in George right now. I'll have it set up for next week. I will. Um, cause I, I just don't want to try to live, um, configure my computer and make everyone wait to bring, bring in, but I'll have it set up for next week and let's schedule that and make sure that that works well. So, um, and if also you want to be part of office hour, let me know. Um, I'd love to get you in there and to do it. Cool. Yeah, no issue. Thanks. Cause it's just, yeah. I should have, should have been here a bit earlier to do that, but Hey, you know, um, instead, um, my wife made me some cinnamon, uh, ginger tea this morning, which is really good. Cause the other day I wasn't feeling well and my appetite's been a little weird. So just trying to stay healthy, stay hydrated, get some more rest, you know, sleep in a little longer, um, and not, uh, show up a hundred percent. So, oh, okay. It refers to the Demerara. It refers to the large grain sifted sugar. Hmm. Okay. 
yeah i'm not i'm not entirely sure i know like jaggery is kind of raw brown sugar it's basically just raw brown sugar um so uh because because i can't um because i'm not gonna bring up the uh the another person here today i'll bring up uh this the presentation here today oh actually there is one more there is one more thing i wanted to share before i get into this um and that is that my student past student uh nancy who's in the bay area um sent me a email and she went to um she went to Young Song's tour. So Young Song, if you don't know, is touring around America right now. Um, and she sent me this photo. And that is Sun Young in the front, Master Cho on the projection, and Young Song in the back. And they're right now in Sebastopol, California and um giving out um teaching teaching the jadam uh oh it's not gonna focus anymore ah i broke it no oh, broke the camera oops <laughs> come on will it focus i don't know how to auto focus. oh there there okay um so picture of master cho he's looking um you know report from young song report from nancy is that master cho is a sharp mind but a weakening body right now um so um so master cho still doing okay in korea hanging out doing his thing um and his son is you know cruising across america i think he'll he'll be up in new york and stuff and doing that and if you want to um if you want to spend a bunch of money to learn something that you can learn in about five minutes by just buying the book Go ahead, tune in, check it out, be there. Um, and um, I also encourage you, you know, to get together with the community that joins, you know, anytime there's a Korean natural farming event, even if, you know, um, it's it's worth checking out Young Song. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, discount him per se. Um, but, you know, I uh, do feel like some of his marketing, he's kind of pinching off Master Cho and trying to use the momentum we've created through this to be like, bring everyone to the dam and just, you know, take leaf matter and put it in a bucket and rot it. And like, wow, that's amazing. Like I always, I, I had this, um, I had this uh, realization in my head when I was on Maui, when Young Song was here and I, he had stayed here in this exact cottage right here for a month. And then we went and did some stuff on Big Island, fixed some problems with um, little fire ants and things. And then we were cruising over to Maui and we had about like, you know, 100, 100 or so people at this event and we're in this tent. And because I had already been to Young Song's lecture, like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine times, I, I've probably been like 20 times to his lecture. <laughs> um, and, and it's great. But, you know, I'm like, and I kind of wandered away from the tent and just like wandered off into the woods a little bit in this pasture and I was, was hanging there and I'm like, and then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, and for his great crescendo, he's going to tell all these people to just put leaves in a bucket and a little bit of dirt and let it rot. And like, and everyone's like, wow, it's like life changing. And it's just like, bro, it's just like rotting stuff. It's so, Jadam is so dirty and uh, quick and dirty and just like um stinky and gross and non-scientific and um disease ugh, laden and all this and but it but it works it works right like rotting material microorganisms breaking things down spraying them it works but it works to like just and i was just like man people their grand crescendo is coming to this event just to learn to throw stuff in a bucket and let it rot it's like your kids are experts at jadam right don't you find you know like things that people leave around rotting right so anyway not not to um not to get too down on that because because it's it's useful like if you're in a poverty place or you don't have access to anything man jadam or you want to just save the world and put it out there jadam's awesome but i just always i'm like his grand crescendo is going to be tell people to put 
leaves in a bucket and rot it. It's like, ooh. But he's actually most proud of his pesticides. So making homemade soap and then using sulfur and then boiling down herbs to create um, and using those three things. So sulfur, soap, and boil down herbs in different combinations to kill pests. And that's maybe where he's the most famous. You know, his cheap, disgustingly cheap versions of his dad's sophisticated, very precise, very effective, very um, amazing stuff um, is uh, like, so his, his JMS and his JLF are just, you know, sure it's cheap, it's easy, it's gross, but it, it's just, they're, they're, oh man, I just, I just, it's hard for me to recommend it to people unless you're in those situations where you can't afford other things. Um, and it, it all depends on what you're, what you're doing and where your goals are. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that is, uh, so George is asking about the Demerara and I think that is the right sugar. Um, yeah, and the goof man saying, yeah, it, it, it'll work. Demerara is good. Um, okay. Okay. Huh. And George is saying he did a micro green, greens comparison with radish. I did not see much difference. Wondering if anyone has advice on how to present the works of the solutions that are visible. Um, Longer growth. Okay, so he's try I, I think George is trying to do a comparison. So he said he used seed soak and sprayed every day the KNF leaf solution after. Um, okay, and let me, is there lacto in there? Like if you, I, I would say the number one thing you want to be including in microgreens, if you were growing microgreens, is lactobacillus because it will keep the molds down and... Um, yeah, there is some lacto in there, so you should be good. I mean, I don't know. Um, it would be interesting to see very, um, very, very good comparison between those two. And what's up, uh, from New Zealand? Yo, time lapse video. Um, and then Ishmael, uh, da Daniel is asking, uh, we, they made a lemon. Uh, food can they use can they use to make vinegar from the fruit after pouring it off I think so I think it um I think there'll be enough sugar content in there with the lemon to do all that and um, oh yeah um so I wouldn't you know lemon vinegar that is it's probably gonna work um, it's all depends on your bricks I think you need about 10 bricks before you um, start the fermentation process to make vinegar. Maybe it's eight bricks. I'm not exactly sure. Eight to 10 bricks, somewhere in there of sugar content. And then it will make vinegar from pretty much anything will turn into vinegar. If you add water enough time, it will convert to a vinegar. Um, it's just what happens. Um, and yeah, so, and then George said he also did not include lacto in his microgreens trial. So I'd be interested to see a trial with lacto versus not lacto, because I think that's going to be the most, um, your most differentiating factor, because sprouts really have a lot of the energy inside. However, I was told if you do the seed soak, your first um, cotylons should be um, twice as big. So it all, it all depends. I, I, I don't know. I mean, the only proof is actually in doing it. So, um, so seeing, seeing it happen, seeing it, you know, go, it's the way to do it. Um, so with that, um, getting into this, I wanted to get back to this presentation a little bit. Um, and last time we covered, um, the fermented plant juice recipe, we went through this and we learned all about it. And I think where we ended up getting to was right here, which was the, um, we went through, you know, why and what it is, and then all the different plants and the different reasonings. And then, you know, each of these had their own caveats to it. For instance, this one that says, um, flowers, which smell strong are more effective. So, um, you know, all, all these things, all, like if I go and review, um, all of these things, like 
you know, the seaweeds, um, it says, you know, reinforces color of fruit. Um, um, yeah. And, and then tips on like, you know, immature fruit versus matured fruit and all these things. There, there are all these pro tips on each of these slides, but, um, but if you want to check that out, um, I got to update KNF support, but, um, KNF support slash office hours, you can find, find last week's episode, which talked all about the different reasons for that. And so I think where we're at here is to get into, um, um, is salt and sand an issue while making, uh, can have food from seaweed? I don't, I don't know. I would assume that's where, you know, he, he's talking about a brown seaweed. He's probably talking about kelp. I don't know. It says brown seaweeds, which is Undaria pinifata. Let me see if I can put that in there to see. Um, I'm just going to put this in and see. Undaria pinifata. Oh, so this is this is what he's talking about. So it it is sort of a kelp. Let me bring this over here and drop this on this side and see. Um, hang on. Oh yeah, yeah. So he is he's talking about this, which is more like a a kelp. Looks like that. Which to me that looks more like kelp than seaweeds. I don't know. I don't know what the difference between kelp and seaweed. It says it's a brown seaweed. Uh, and it says it's a native of Japan Sea in the Pacific Coast, Japan and Korea, Wakame. Um, but this is the kind of seaweed he's fermenting here. And that's the one that was listed. So, um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't think much rocks and sand would be in that one. Um, and but the salt, I don't think the salt would matter. He kind of it says. Um, I think you kind of a light stone to press down on the seaweed, right? Kind of like um, press down on it, then then add the sugar, sugar. So you're kind of squeezing it out a little bit, bit first. But anyway, I talked about that. Um, actually, the last couple of weeks been talking about seaweed. It's always a popular topic. People want to ferment seaweed, um, probably because it grows in the ocean and it's so mineral rich and it's great stuff. Um, but um, but yeah, so let's get down to this here of how to make it. Get into that bit. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll finish this up here. And, um, it says when to collect, um, materials and just before sunrise. Um, and why, why would you do it just before sunrise? Well, the theory behind this is that what happens is most plants are growing at night. Actually during the day, they have their leaves out and the leaves are collecting, uh, you know, like solar panels, they're collecting energy, light through photosynthesis, and they're gaining energy. When that's happening, the sunlight is a UV and all the, the bandwidths of the sun are very powerful. And if they hit a growth hormone or something very tender, it will kind of um, destroy that compound. So during the day, the plant takes all the growth hormones and sucks them into the core of the plant and just collects sunlight during the day. And it just gets energized during the day. Then evening happens, night happens, all those hormones and enzymes come out and go into the growing tips. And you'll notice the plants grow more at nighttime. So the plant does most of its growth at night. And then, um, and then if you come and pick it right in the morning, just before sunrise, then all the growth tips are still in there before the, the heat has caused the, them to recede back into the plant. They're all in the very tips and they're the most concentrated because they've been growing all night. And if you snap those tips off, now you've gotten all the growth hormones. So if you collect just before sunrise, you're going to have more growth hormones, more enzymes, more living things that you have, everything that you want. That's the whole reason for it, right? Then it says quickly snap the growing points, right? You don't want the old parts of the plant that are old, that are collecting sunlight, that are very, um, you know, used to just getting hit by the sun because they don't have very much growth hormone in them. 
where the growth hormone is, is in the growing tips, the shoots, right? So that's what you want to snap off. That's what you want to harvest. That's what you want to collect. That's why you don't want to just take a whole plant and take it and then make fermented plant juice out of it. Unless, of course, it's like comfrey or something like that, where or a lettuce or something where there's no like growth tip to it, or it's just a leaf, then you could grab the whole thing. But but you're running these growth tips and you're wanting these things. And also the best time to collect is on what they call Lao Moon, which is just after the um the full moon. So today, today's moon phase is Mahalani. Uh, it's pretty much full moon. You'll see it tonight. Or let me put it over here so you guys can see because I'm not on that screen. Um, but if I go tomorrow, Kulu, the following day, Lao Kukahi. So two days from now is Lao Kukahi. And what happens in Lao Kukahi two days from now, if you wake up in the morning, you will notice the sun is rising in the east and the moon is setting in the west and both heavenly bodies are above you. And you'll also notice there's a very high tide. You'll also notice if you cut plants, they'll just continually give out more and more sap. Like they just continue to ooze. And it's that when all those plants are being sucked up by the full moon, just after the full moon, when the sun and the moon are both up in the morning time, that's when you want to grab and grow. So I think that's what he means by number three, special attention meaning that, um, you know, the right moon phase, the right weather phase, the right everything, and um, taking the growing point. So this is when to collect the material. I don't know why I quickly snap the growing points is when, but yeah, seems pretty legit to me. Um, um, when... Um, Thomas is saying here, with this in mind, since photosynthesis is happening during the day, wouldn't a plant be full of sugars during the day? And an FBJ made from a plant collected during the day be full of those uh, plant sugars? No, no. They, they, the plant actually translocates its sugars. Um, and the photosynthesis, I, I'm not exactly sure. It's chlorophyll is what's doing the... Um, the photosynthesis, I'm not sure it's sugars themselves. The sugars, I think, are more fragile than the, the chlorophyll and the photosynthesis. Um, yeah, and your intention. So, um, so anyway, and if you are interested more about the moon um, in those phases, I did, um, if you search on YouTube, or if you go on my channel and you search down here, uh, let's not have that play. Let's just go to my channel here. Can I do it? My channel. And then here, well, transition is over. So on the channel and then search for moon. Oh, I put a slash after it, but here you go. KNF moon calendar for planting. So you can just search KNF Moon Calendar for planting. In fact, let me just copy the link and paste it in here. There you go. And then um, this talks all about it. And I know I heard from somebody, it's hard to see this screen. So it's actually hard to see what I'm looking at. Um, but, um, but this is the way the Moon app works and all that. Um, so if you wanna learn more about the moon and the moon phases, only 545 views. Uh, it is two hours and 22 minutes long, but I think I want to re maybe redo this in a better way to share it with more people because it's just a presentation that I made. Um, yeah, and there is an app that I made for the moon phases. It's on. It's it's only on iPhone right now. I think all my Android apps are down because I had to do some, um, I don't know, they, they always have things that need things done and I don't think I did them. Um, but the iOS... I have all that up, so, um, okay. In the morning, the plant is producing hormones and growth regulators and complex nutrients for the day's growth. That's why you should harvest in the morning. These get transported to the new growth. Yep, so all, all those things. Yeah, cool. So I think I'm correct with that theory. You can fact check me or whatever, but um, 
And I don't think, um, I don't think it's uh, Hawaii specific. It's not. It's it's the whole Earth uses the um, is the thing. Oh, Moon Garden. Hmm, interesting. I should probably redo the app and put out four or five more apps. <laughs> Just corner the market on that. But um, um, sugars get moved to the sinks during the evening. Uh, well, at least an hour after sunset, triggered by the far red light, proteins will be constructed in the leaves during the day. Okay, so, um, so that yeah, it's a great bunch of people. Thanks, Partita. That's awesome. You're you're so scientific, and I don't know where you learned all this, but it's amazing. I'm glad you share it with us. Um. Okay, so she so she's saying that if you wanna if if you go during if you harvest during the day, you're gonna get more proteins. Um, yeah, interesting. That's, that's something where I need to learn a little bit more of the science behind it and all that. But I think in general, I'm correct with the theory. I mean, you can fact check me and really show me what's up. And I'd love to <laughs> go deep into that and see, see where I'm right and where I'm wrong. Um, but I'm pretty sure. Um, so, so how to make it basically he's, you know, he's showing a few different plants here, but really you want to pick one at a time. Um, so you go out and you pick just the tips of them, pick them up before dawn, right as the sun is starting to rise, before the morning dew has gone away, um, the auxiliary buds, the bamboo shoots, these things, watermelon, you know, all these, all these little, um, indeterminate, uh, shoots you can grab. Um, okay. I am correct. Okay, cool. That's great. Um, Yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, go, go snap the tips in the morning. Uh, just one at a time though. Try not to mix a whole bunch of things. So just take one material that you've collected in the morning, mix it together. I usually use a bowl. It looks like they're using a tarp here and they're using crude sugar, which is brown sugar. And it says that of your plant material, you can weigh it and you can add one third to half the amount of the materials. So meaning that if I got two pounds of materials, I'd add one pound or a little less than a pound, so, you know, um, a third of two pounds. <laughs> um, and you mix it together, mix it together, mix it together until it looks nice and then pack it into a, um, into a vessel. And then they're adding a stone on top to keep it down. So, and, and to keep the volume down to two thirds with a rock on top. I often don't use a rock. I'm not going to lie to you. I just pack it in, just smash it down with my fist get it in the jar, vessel, bucket, whatever it is, very nice. And I don't put a rock on top, however you could. Um, and it's important that you don't wash the plants before you mix them with the sugar. And, um, and you can, and it says here also make several kinds of FPJ with a single material. So make a bunch of them with only one material in each jar or each, each vessel that you're fermenting. Uh, but then you can mix them when you apply it later. So when you go to actually put it onto your plants, you can mix in uh, two, three of them without changing the dilution. So three, even at one to 500, you can mix them in and then those get um, put onto your plants. So after they packed it in two thirds, they cover it with paper and then um, the juice uh, completes in five to seven days. I actually find here in Hawaii, it's done in three days, three, four days. Um, it happens really fast when the higher temperature. Oh, hey, thanks, Stone Mason. Really appreciate it, man. Oh, it's good to get super chats once in a while. Appreciate it. Um, and um, so um, the power is strongest in a couple days after completion. Um, I'm not... So, so maybe it's best to use the FPJ a couple days after completion is what it's saying. I'm not entirely sure. I've never heard that. I do know that, um, from growing tips, their best, their shelf life's about three months to a year, depending three months to a year after a year. If you've done it from growing tips, it's more like you've done it from fruits. Fruits are used more in the mature stage and, um, so your growing tips will lose all their vital hormones and enzymes and those things. They'll just kind of, or actually they'll convert from hormones into enzymes, I think is what it, what it ends up being. And you have a lot more enzymes, although I'm not even sure that's possible. Enzymes, I think, are, I don't know. 
getting in above my head of scientific stuff and I need to read more about enzymes really is what it comes down to. Um, and keep it in a dark, cool place, right? So it's pretty simple. It's just like making kimchi, right? The, um, the beginning stage here, I think, when it said right here, it said the origins of FPJ are in the kimchi. So it's just like making kimchi. It's just like making um, sauerkraut. You're taking the material, mixing it with sugar, no salt in there. Um, hmm. And then so here's here's a picture of them making it, right? This is, looks like dropwort. They got a bunch of dropwort, nice growing tips cut. They're mixing it in. Uh, I don't know where they mixed it. I think there's some slides missing from this because they're actually supposed to be mixing it in this bucket with the sugar and mixing it and then packing it into this jar, just like you would uh, making a kimchi. And then it looks like they put a bunch more sugar on top, which I don't know if they needed to do that. And then there's that uh, mixing in with the drop wort. That's really what mine usually looks like. Maybe they mixed it all in there. I'm not exactly sure. This isn't the best guide. And then they're draining it off through a bucket. And look at all that juice they got. So this juice, you don't squeeze it out. It's just the juice that comes out osmotically and then it's fermented and it's just the best juice. It's not the rest of the crap that's in the cell. So I'm not really sure it's the best picture to go through and look at it, but... Um, so they're saying, you know, how to make it. Essentially, you've got the ingredients with the dew on it, which means you harvested it early in the morning. It's still a little bit moist from morning dew. Um, cut them into two-inch sizes if they're too big, or shred them with your hands. Don't put it in a blender. Don't pulverize it. Um, yeah, it's not it's not the juice you're looking for. Um, and then he says to add a one-to-one -one weight ratio. So... Again, this, this contradicted the previous slide, um, and I find that one-to-one -one sugar is far too much. So I'm going to disregard this and say that this is actually incorrect here, unless you're using a really sweet fruit, in which case then it is equal parts. Um, but I would just disregard this if you're making it from plants. So sorry, it's, maybe it's a little bit confusing because it's like, how much sugar do I use? He said a third, half, and then one-to-one. If you come to the class, I will show you the exact amount of sugar to use because you can actually tell when you break that osmotic boundary and there's nothing like seeing it and being it and feeling it and having it to do to see um, how much sugar is enough. But you really don't need much. And if you watch that, there's this guy on YouTube that, that you know, pretty popular. He adds way too much sugar. You'll see sugar at the bottom just sitting there. It's like, oh man, I, it's cringeworthy almost. Um, and... And then he also puts a, there's a sugar cap, which also I disregard this. Every time I made it with Master Cho, there was never a sugar cap. Um, and you can look at other Master Cho lectures where people ask about the sugar cap. Sometimes it's on fruit juice to kind of retard the fermentation. Um, but anyway, I, I just, I don't do that. I don't do that. It's just unnecessary. Um, and then it ferments and after it's um, fermented, you filter it after fermentation is completed, surely filtering it for preserve. <laughs> so what that means is you pour off the juice and then add more sugar at that point to super saturate it. And that's when you get more sugar is added. So in this recipe here where there's, there's so much sugar added in the beginning, unnecessary, you don't need that much for fermentation to occur. You do need more sugar at the end to super saturate and keep it from rotting, however, to preserve it. So... I'm sorry, this this slide is kind of like confusing, not the best. It's really um, contradictory, right? Here it is saying, you know, this much sugar, half to a third. And then you're looking at this one and it's saying equal parts. It's like, well, and the only thing I can tell you is that when you, you know, if you're following a recipe from a, thing, a book, it's hard to know. When you do it in person, I can show you exactly how much. And it's like, okay, enough sugar. And then you'll save money on sugar cost, essentially. Um, so after you've made it, then how to use it. Um, and always, 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 it's almost always used with something else. So you never really use it alone. You use it with something else. So like if you put it, plug it into this calculator here, KNF Solution Calculator, it will show you that, you know, plant juice isn't just used alone. 
However, it is typically diluted 1 to 500, which is 0.1 to 0.2% concoction. And you can apply it on the leaf surface and into compost with IMO. So it's a biostimulant. This food gets everything going. Um, I, but um, George, I'd, I'd recommend that you don't use as much sugar in the fermentation process and you actually super saturate it later versus using the sugar up front. Anyway, it's just, um, it's a, there's, yeah, but anyway, people, um, so anyway, um, and then, yeah, and then, and then here it says, you know, add crude sugar, right? So I think when it's saying add crude sugar, I think this is talking about the super saturation right here is adding the crude sugar. Because um, if, if you add too much sugar in the in the um, the fermentation, the osmotic extraction fermentation process, the early stage, then your sugar gets doesn't make it into your final solution. And you end up composting that sugar or if you're going to turn it into a vinegar, I guess it's not lost, but um but I recommend less sugar in upfront always like it's like a little bit of sugar just to get that osmotic pressure going and then it'll ferment and then later you can add the sugar. Um, so, and it says here that, you know, the phylosphere microbial activities will be accelerated. So all the microbes living on your leaf surface will be um, uh, excited there. So, I don't know if that was the best one, but here, thank you, Cho Global Natural Farming. That's the best we got from Master Cho coming to us and try my best to translate that of how to do the fermented plant juice, uh, which I call canna food because it makes sense because that's how it's used. Um, and so with that, we're almost at the hour. And next week, uh, if I get to this presentation, we'll be going through the nutritional cycle, which seems fun. It's always a complex great topic so hopefully the slides will make it more clear and everything and then one last thing i wanted to get to before i sign off here was that partito was saying up here she read a paper that suggested cobalt levels let me, let me transition this one that cobalt levels come mostly from insect urine and frass i don't know if this is true but it makes some sense that b12 is deemed a weak area for vegan diets where the food is washed um, so that's interesting to me that cobalt um, is coming from insect f urine and frass, right? Um, and um, yeah, I do use JMS. I'm just I'm I'm saying that um, it's the right case and things. I, I don't use it here on this farm very much. Um, we do use it for building up things. Um, okay. Um, and then post up is saying, I find in my limited observation areas with IMO4 and JMS on my land are far exceeding the areas with one or the other. Oh, so he's using it in a combination. JMS only are the areas that look the weakest and the whole farm gets on um, the seed soak solution weekly. Um, so cool. It's great to see trials being going done. Um, yeah, the eyes and all that. Okay. I'm just back a little bit reading these things, making sure I get all of this going and, um, okay. Yeah. And JMS does increase the electrical conductivity of your soil. Um, cleaving process more simple. Yep. So all those things are happening. Um, okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's all good. Um, cool. Cool. So, um, uh, thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in next week. I'm going to try and have it set up so we can bring on a guest and, um, share a little bit, hopefully, um, coordinate with George, um, be great to check in with him, see his projects going, his microgreens, all that looks super exciting. Um, want to thank you guys. Uh, I also got the, um, I fixed my SSL certificate. So Pure KNF Foundation website back up and running here. 
and then you know from here it links over you know here's the office hour live happening right here right now oh my gosh and then here you can go knf support check out this website which is what our foundation has been running recently and looks like i got a few questions to answer and office hours here i have a little bit more um looks like the last one is december 11th so today after i sign off from here i will upload all that and get all those things going so hey and thank you for a super chat uh daniel appreciate it man uh it's good <laughs> um and yeah so cool and share share videos and all that and thanks so just want to thank you, thank Pierre Cana Foundation, thank all you guys for tuning in, and appreciate you guys. Have a great week. Um, long live the natural farmer. Aloha my. Oh, and check this out. I got this slow closing curtain. Check this one. Oh yeah. Bye now. See ya.